You might have heard of the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera OG. Nowadays, a lot of camera gear reviewers are making videos asking the clickbaity question whether it is still worth possessing it in 2020, 21, 22, and so on for all of the damn Anthropocene. So, what's the deal regarding its legendary filmic qualities? We'll get to that. But first, note that even though it is a low-budget cinema camera, it comes with as many limitations as the names of Allah, and four granitic and, I dare say, cardinal qualities in any camera. So, it is indeed a pocket camera, like the 4K or the 6K versions. It's small, lightweight and compact. Wherever you go, those 400 grams won't encumber you more than a small handgun, and you can safely shoot the King of England with this one without any repercussion. It has an MFT mount, so you can pretty much adapt to any lens, the new ones and the old ones, especially the C-mount TV glass that is generally softer but also significantly cheaper. For the most part of the last year, I've shot with the Canon 16 to 116 f 1.9 TV lens. And all I can say is, this lens is barely acceptable. It's pineapple jelly wide open, it's almost decent at 2.8, and gets moderately sharp at f4. And... it's perfect for the OG. Okay, bear with me. You would be tempted to use modern sharp glass on the Pocket OG to compensate for its low resolution. So you stick with the Olympus 12 to 40, you get out, you shoot some bucolic Tuscanian hills in autumn, stop down at f8. Ah, <sighs> what a sight. Those long cutting shadows reminding you of tranquil landscapes such as those only seen in paintings. A perfect lazy Italian evening. You take a sip of your Chianti and that's amore. Fuck. That's a moire. It's an artifact that happens when a fine pattern of an image is approximately the same relative size of the pixel forming the sensor. This issue won't be solvable in post. But you can address the issue by adding a 400 euros low pass filter. Yeah. Or you can slightly blur the image, which is exactly what a low pass filter does, but in a way that doesn't screw up too much the fine details. So, you see, a softer lens is actually a great companion for the Pocket OG. The best part of any Blackmagic camera is obviously the recording formats. This camera can record ProRes and Cinema DNG RAW. As you might have seen, I pretty much like to mess around with colors and emulate all sorts of different film stocks from a time when movies weren't all recorded in green boxes and the 12-bit Cinema DNG format is excellent if you want to fiddle with your image without a fear of destroying it. Combine this with 13 stops of dynamic range and you'll unlock a tasteful phobia for every other DSLR or mirrorless that delivers video in 8-bit format. So, should you get one? Probably not. But it depends on what you want. What the fuck do you want? What is it? I can't figure it out. This camera's battery life is shorter than a zoomer's attention span, but slightly longer than the usual time it takes a millennial to buy a Funko Pop as soon as the new IP drops. It will last you about 12 minutes of continuous recording, if you're lucky. That's why you'll need an external battery. The camera has been discontinued, so no more updates. That means you have to use old SD cards. I recommend this line. You're limited to shooting at 24, 25 or 30 frames per second. So, you'll have to make do without slow-mos, and of course, for stable shots, you'll have to rely extensively on external gear such as gimbals or glide cams, because the OG stabilization in post is always a dire compromise between steadiness and crop. So, we've talked about three of the four cardinal virtues of a camera. It is portable, adaptable, has a robust image quality. But here's the most important one. Temperance. It will teach you how to work around situations where your possibilities are limited, how to frame properly an image knowing that you won't be able to change much in post, to plan your shoots since you have only a tiny range between 200 and 1600 ISO, 
And that is pretty much what everyone seems to forget when talking about cinema cameras. The planning. It will teach you a lot. You'll have to understand how to color grade properly since uh, the last pocket original LUT packs I've checked was, was dating back to 2018 and most LUTs are trash anyways. You'll learn the flexibility of power grades and you'll end up being able to match every clip from any different camera. There's more to the filmic look than the sensor. I've heard many people praise its legendary Fairchild sensor against the one found in the 4K and 6K versions. Well, you can pretty much match almost to perfection all clips from the 4K and the OG. Of course, they would differ in sensor size. The OG is smaller, so you'll have to frame differently to obtain the same shallow depth of field as the 4K. Once you consider moiré and the infrared pollution, it's clear that the Pocket 4K is a superior camera in every possible aspect. It's also more expensive, but not by much, so you should totally get that if you have a chance. The problem is, it isn't very pockety. So, who could benefit from the OG? Travel video makers, documentaries, or generally people who want to use it for the oldest reason known to man and camera manufacturers alike. To capture memories. I always bring it with me when I go camping with friends, visiting new places, museums, or just wandering the land. You could do the same with an iPhone, but for me and I suspect, for many other millennials passionate with photography, that just wouldn't be enough. It might sound strange, but memories, your own personal memories, depend on a medium of representation, and that varies widely from generation to generation. Much of our aesthetic regarding the visual representation of memories is deeply rooted in our childhood. When I was a child, uh, I remember my parents taking film photos of me and my friends, and that aesthetic stuck with me. The best movies I've watched as a teenager were shot on film, and that aesthetic stuck with me as well. The concept of a visual representation of memory is deeply intertwined with a supporting medium, so recreating a film look as closely as possible to the capabilities of my OG is my way as a millennial to treasure genuine happy moments of my life. Maybe in the future, for Zoomers or Gen Alpha, those memories would resemble poppy Instagram posts, I don't know. But for me, at the current time, it's film. It's great. It's the imperfections, the lens softness. And capturing frames with my friends and relatives. Producing them with this nostalgic aesthetic. Well, that's a moire. And that's a fucking moire again. <laughs>